So I picked this interesting point of view because I want to talk about the Barton today. Uh, I've had this on my car for over a year. A lot of you guys have checked out my Barton installation video. And uh, I want to thank you guys for that. Hopefully it helped you guys out in some way with the install. Um, I've been riding with the Speed Dog shift knob. And some, like my wife will say, I purchased the entire Barton just to be able to put the Speed Dog shift knob on top. Because I fell in love with the knob first and then wanted the best shifter in the business. So the two of these together are pretty much a, a perfect match. It's a beautiful setup. And now it's time to make some changes. But before I do, I wanted to talk about my experience with the Barton for the last year plus. Now, my purchase for the Barton was done on a Black Friday sale. I paid full price minus, I think it was 10%. They had a little 10% off sale going. And I got my Barton for Christmas for my kids and installed it sometime around February. So it's been February of uh, last year. So I've been driving around with this shifter for a long time and I'm very happy with it. There's a lot of significant changes in the way that this thing reacts. And the most important part was my issues when on the quarter mile I'd be going first and second no problem and then when I go into shift into fourth gear I'd always or third gear I'd always get jammed and you see I just just pushed it right into third gear um fourth gear as well I used to be struggling with the other shifter and one second is you know on a quarter mile one second is one second you you lose that second trying to shift and you're done so this solved that problem um I've had about 12 or 13 runs I don't do it very often but you know, the first bunch of batch of runs I did with the stock shifter, I was always having trouble with third and fourth. Following the Barton shifter, I've never had an issue. Um, it's just because of the way it wants to be right in that third and fourth gate. It's always there. It's always ready. Um, shifting in the first and second, you have to pull it forward. The very first few times you shift, when you shift from the switch from the factory shifter, which is kind of sloppy and very wobbly um, and also very loose, you're used to kind of just, I'm going into first gear and just give it a little whack in the first gear. And I'm exaggerating. It, it takes a little bit of pressure, but you know what I'm saying. You give it a little whack and you're right in first gear. The Barton, you can't do that. The Barton takes a significant amount of force to get it over to that first gear and second gear gates. And that's a good thing. It's not bad. Like in other words, my arm doesn't get tired if I'm driving or, you know, it's not a workout to get it over there. You're used to giving it a whack in the first gear where now with the Barton, you have to grab it and handle it and put it into first gear and put it into second gear. But as soon as you're ready to go into third and fourth, it's right there for you, it's ready. So those are the significant changes with your shifting. Now, in addition to looking great, um, on this specific configuration, so the Speed Dog shift knob is a teeny bit, and by teeny bit, I mean close to a quarter inch bigger than the Barton shifter knob that comes with this setup. That in addition to the Barton shifter, uh, the shifter is sitting a little bit higher. I would say a minimum of a half an inch to a three quarter of an inch higher. I didn't take any special measurements, just know where my hand used to be versus where it is now. It's a little bit higher. It's never been an issue. It's, you know, it's not something I, I something I noticed, but not something that bothered me. Uh, shifting feels more engaged and it's just a much better experience. I look forward to coming in here, grabbing this thing and just going. It's it's just a much better feeling. It's more solid. It's more what should have been in the car in the first place. And, you know, that sloppy shifter just, you know, it may work on the Toyota Corolla, but it doesn't work in a Challenger. This is what should be in there. If you're going to spend your money on anything, spend it on the Barton. If you like the stick, spend, uh, I mean, the one bad thing about Barton, and, and I'm sorry, guys, but your shift knobs are kind of bland they didn't really do it for me i got the orange shift knob to match my orange, Bar orange barton logo and i looked at it and i just i wasn't going to use it it's it's just basically a semi shiny ball with some you know the 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 shift pattern engraved in it and some paint in there i think to be honest with you if 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 there's one upgrade barton could do is they should just team up with speed dog and have speed dog make their shift knobs and just be done with it because there's only one thing that can make this Barton better, and that is this shift knob, or the thousand that Speed Dog is currently making, including the, uh, I think they have Mopar branding now, where you can have the Scat Pack B in the side, or you can have your SRT logo, you know, kind of embedded in here. 
This shift knob has been on for over a year and not to change it to a review about the speed dog shift knob, but there's no sign of wearing. And when you look inside the shift knob, the orange goes through and through. So it's not something that's just gonna rub off over time. Um, now, getting to the reason of this video. Um, back, in, uh, back in the summertime, I was at We Are Mopar 2 and I was wandering around and I ran into the Barton booth and I started talking to Dave about uh, some of the new shift handles they have. And when I put one in my hand, which is this one I have right here. Um, now I am a ball shift guy, but you know, this is very, this is a very attractive pistol grip. And when you look at this thing online, the first thing you think is, wow, it's kind of clunky. It's got these bolts here. How can that be comfortable? How can that, you know, sit in my hand and I want to handle this all day. I mean, all this stuff feels like it's going to be annoying. So when I picked up the pistol grip in their booth and I put it in my hand, I was completely amazed at how well this thing felt in hand. I can't explain how you make metal feel soft, but the rounded edges and the way everything is non-sharp, um, you know, it's just, when you put it in your hand, it is very comfortable. You don't feel any of these uh, ledges here. Um, this area is rounded really nicely. I don't know how to best describe this, but if you can make metal feel soft, that's what they achieved here. There's nothing annoying about holding this shift handle. It just feels perfect. Your, your fingers are in the right spot. Everything just feels so good. So I'm thinking, why not shift over to it? So, uh, and talking to, uh, to Dave, we were talking about, well, he's like, which version of the shifter do you have? Um, do you have the one with the adjustable yoke? And we went back and forth. I'm like, I have no idea what the adjustable yoke is. Um, but I do have a video with my install. Let's go check it out. So I call up my video online and he instantly looks at it and goes, that's your video. I'm like, yeah, I made that video to, you know, kind of document my install process. He goes, well, you know, a bunch of our customers have told us that's the video that helped them decide they wanted a Barton. So I was like, wow, the, the company that I love recognized the video that I made for their product. And that, that was pretty awesome. And then I didn't realize it at the time, but basically Dave is the man at Barton. So that was kind of cool too, to find out after the fact. But anyway, after talking to him, we, we got to talking afterwards and uh, we kind of set this shifter up and we got the right piece here, which is, this is the adjustable yoke, which now allows me to um, basically adjust, let me get this on camera, adjust the shifter forward and backwards as well as the standard right and left. And that's what we got. So the install should be pretty simple and straightforward. And uh, I'm looking forward to driving with the, uh, I mean, it's the same height, but now your hand is from up here. You're now your hand is now shifted down here to do your shifting. So I'm guessing this is still gonna be a lower shift point for me. So it takes a little getting used to, but um, one of the things that attracted me to this is when I, uh, I did an install, we swapped out a, the uh, ball shifter for the older style pistol grip without the inlays on a friend's Hellcat. And he let me drive it after we did that and it felt so nice. So I may be willing to swap this out, but at this point, now that I've got both, there's really no risk. If I don't like this, I can always go back to that. Um, but either way, and one of the other reasons too is uh, after getting my red seat belts, uh, the orange shifter really doesn't match anymore. So, you know, I know it's kind of trivial and silly, but, uh, you know, going back to black or black to basic so I can enjoy my seat belts without my wife making fun of my mismatch interior. That'd be kind of cool as well. All right. So, uh, here's the simple part of this. We're going to take off the pro clip. We are going to pop this out and I'm going to try to do the install by leaving the, uh, center console in. And, uh, I'm hoping I can get you guys at a good angle. Uh, starting with right here um, and we'll get started. All right, bring you guys in a little bit closer. Hope I don't uh, knock into you guys too much. But what we're gonna do is basically loose these bolts. Also, these bolts have been in for since February of last year. It is now April and they are still tight. I've never retightened them. The uh, washer lock washer combo, if done correctly, will stand the test of time. So I know some people have asked if my bolts have come loose. Here is a, a 
really good testament to <laughs> that they have not. Okay, this should just slide right out. Doing a quick visual inspection, everything looks good. No issues, nothing seems out of place, nothing was loose. Gonna have to go get a wrench to move that. Let's uh, put in this yoke, that's the direction we're talking here. Yoke goes in this way. Now, is it the right size? It should just slide right in. And then these should just go right into place. Okay, so it looks like we have got these black ones with the lock washers. I'm not gonna put it in just yet. So I gotta get the, um, but yeah, these go in here. And then there's a set screw that comes in from the other way. And I guess it push, puts pressure here to further prevent the, the stick from moving once you have it set up. But that's that, I just gotta remove the, the thingy and then I'll be right back. All right, I spent a little bit of time and I got the shift boot installed. Where's this, is that upside down? That's weird. So I got the shift boot installed. That took a bit of time. Um, just getting all this stuff organized. We did get a zip tie, where did that go? There we go bring the zip tie around and through I remember from the first one this shift boot is a pain it's leather so it stretches but it just does not want to cooperate so it takes a while to get this thing fished on there just make sure you put the uh, zip tie on the right way because you're not going to want to pull that stupid thing off again and try to start over okay cut off the excess So now we've got the uh, washer. So you got the washer and lock washer. And they go here. Okay, and then you have the lock washer only. That goes there. Make sure the handle is facing forward. And of course, when you're putting the shift boot on, make sure you put the shift boot on in the right direction. Because that would be just kind of funny. And of course, don't put both screws in at the same time. Start with the top one. There we go. And of course, you're gonna have to get a set of Allen keys for these, which I'm gonna have to run in and grab in a minute. So again, lock washer. Seriously. Lock washer, then the washer for the bottom. Just gotta adjust that. Where do I want it? I think leaning a little bit forward. This is the hard part. Adjusting it without. I think a little bit forward. Moving in the first, give myself some more room. So now my assumption is on the opposite side, we put this set screw in here. And that somehow holds everything in place as well. Of course, I didn't read any instructions, so I have to read it afterwards. And if it turns out good, all this stuff will remain in the video. And there we go, we hit it. Get a little torque on that set screw there. There we go. So we got all these Allen keys tightened down really well. 
All right, let's do one last check to make sure I'm good with the positioning. Feels nice. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up and turn it sideways like I did last time. So we can get this all around it. Pull it back in the third gear. Don't forget to plug back in your console here. Probably wish I could see it, that'd probably be better. There we go. Remember when you put your center console back in, you push these two in first and then push down on everything. Get your boot back in place. And peel this all down so it looks good. I like it. That feels totally different than sitting up here. Wow. All right, well, I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this. I like it right now, it feels good in hand, but I definitely wanna get some time driving with it. Uh, all right, so this is just a very nice, another option for you. It's very good looking. We're gonna see how I feel about it, but the swap over was really quick and easy. I did it in probably about a half hour if I wasn't videoing everything. Um, if you got any questions, drop them in the comments below. If this video helped you out in some way, please feel free to gently press that like button. If you're stopping by for the first time, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.